Matt Galan is our guest on the Business Method podcast today. Matt is a seasoned serial entrepreneur, biohacker, life optimizer, and practical spirituality student that has built 13 profitable companies. Over his 20 years, uh, over his 20 year career as an entrepreneur and marketer, Matt has captured over 8 million leads, tested 14,000 marketing exper experiments, spent over 10 million on digital advertising, and made over 50 million in online sales. Matt is maybe the best known as May, Matt is maybe best known as the founder and CEO of Bioptimizers, Bi a top of the line supplement company helping tens of thousands of people optimize their performance levels. And he's on the show today. Matt, welcome to the show. How are you? It's great to be here. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny to hear you read that because you know, we're up to like 18,000 experiments, over 100 million in revenue, um, good. 14 companies. So, yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit outdated, but it's always good to go back, look at the past, and realize how much progress you're making. So. Uh, it's amazing results regardless. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So how I found out about you, I was um, I was at lunch with a friend and he had this box and mm -hmm. in this box he said, I've got this stuff and I just found out about it and I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, give you some of it, Chris, and you're gonna love it. And as somebody that likes to you optimize my performance levels. Um, he gave me some um, of the supplement, and I think it was called Focus Savagery or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, and, which is a, which is a high performance state we can talk about. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yes, we definitely want to talk about that. Um, and some spray to spray in my mouth as well. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, within three minutes, I was buzzing. I was, I was like, man, this is. He was like, I can feel it too, and uh, and that person that I uh, was at lunch with was Jesse was Jesse Elder, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and so I started doing some research, and and a good friend of mine started buying your stuff as well. That I I, I told him about it, and um, and I was like, oh, I got to get Matt on the show and have a chat with him and talk to him about high performance and supplements and and neuroscience and all the great stuff. So. Um, yeah, glad to have you those on are my here. obsessions. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love all those things. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, y you want to keep finding ways of increasing your functioning capability. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to do that. I mean, being more effective is always the most important thing. And then of course, maximizing efficiency. And most people think of those things in terms of what they're doing and which activities, which is a big part of it but it really happens in the mind. Mm -hmm. So the more you can optimize your brain, and I'm a huge proponent and fan of like neurofeedback, not just nootropics. So doing brain training, I've, I've spent about seven weeks of my life doing emotional processing. So mm -hmm. EFT, forgiveness work, brain wire, just really cleaning house on the nervous system, which, I, which can be overemphasized. That is such a needle mover for virtually everyone that I know that's done that. Yeah. Um, levels you up on every point, you know, EQ, emotional connection, levels you up in your ability to control your brain waves. Yeah. So, and then Nootropics, um, which is our latest company. I mean, that's so, such an immediate game changer. I've been playing with Nootropics for a long time. I mean, I, I've, there's not much I haven't tried in the field, including injecting myself with Russian peptides <laughs> uh, doing intranasal sprays, whatever, you know, I've uh -huh. done a lot of, a lot of compounds and been looking for really a way to activate multiple states. Uh -huh. So I think state controlling states and using them almost like a radio dial and saying, okay, it's time to write. Let me get hyper-focused. I'm having a meeting with people. Let me switch more into a high EQ state or let me hang out with my wife and my dog cats and let me get into a zen chill state or whatever other states you need you need to go do squats and get into focus savagery mm -hmm. um you want to be able to just control that and, that and so you're maximizing your effectiveness your performance no matter what you're doing and and that's kind of a fundamental obsession of mine okay. yeah where does that that drive come from matt um you know we all want to perform better um and we all are kind of like I guess a lot of us entrepreneurs or biohackers are in our own right trying to figure out what works for us, what's the little uh, little hacks that we can do or supplements that we can add or training we can add to change change our states. But where do you think that drive comes from for you? For me, it's like I just want to live a better life. 
you know, I, I want to feel better. I want to be happier and I want to be, have more harmonious relationships in my life. Um, but I'm curious kind of what's the drive for you. Yeah, most people, you know, it's kind of a spectrum. And, you know, at Bob's Minds, we have like the triangle. I'm, I'm rocking the shirt right now. But aesthetics, performance, and health, a lot of people start their journey with aesthetic obsession, right? They want to build mm -hmm. more, more muscle mass, which was my obsession, or lose body fat. So started with that. And it's normal to get obsessed with that. And then you realize, no, there's a better, bigger game, mm -hmm. which is biological optimization, which is, again, optimizing more for health, for energy, or mental performance and physical performance. It went from aesthetics. I was obsessed with bodybuilding for three years. I went from 147, 147 pounds when I was 16 to 235 when I was 19, training wow. twice a day. Um, like nothing else mattered, right? Like yeah. you're having a conversation with me, we were talking about bodybuilding. And then I got obsessed with self-defense. And that was really my first revelation of high performance. I trained with the Navy SEAL for seven years and he's all about high performance. You know, you don't become a Navy SEAL unless you master getting into a high performance state Right. and train with them. And, and that became really kind of one of the first states that I consciously created. And he was a big part of that. I mean, he, he was all about state dependent learning and what's in state dependent learning is a key little part of this. So the state that you learn something in is the state that you'll be able to perform it in. Okay. So for an example, if I train you in self-defense, which I, I taught for a long time, and I teach you, we're just relaxed and having a casual conversation. None of that is really going to imprint on your nervous system in terms of being able to use that in a super high stress state. Mm -hmm. Yerky Dotson, if you read the old research on Yerky Dotson, they did some really fascinating experiments where people were just trying to get to a door and open a door with a key. And as they increased the stress, people's performance just went Declined. down on a cliff. Right. So with self-defense and I just using this as an analogy, but you need to create a super high stress training environment. Otherwise mm -hmm. the stuff doesn't burn in, but that's, and that's a key to everything. What the, the, the axiom of the mind is what fires together, wires together. Right. The more you can understand that there's, and that's got infinite applications, whether it's nootropics, whether it's, you know, anchoring states through NLP or other ways, um, whether it's just training and rep repetition, it will, whatever, again, you're firing, it will wire and you can use that to your advantage. And that's how you create states the more, you know, the more you stack, again, a conscious design of a state and you can use the newts to amplify the intensity of that state. So for an example, like right now, I'm on a specific stack to maximize my verbal, my extroversion, my connectiveness. And because I can be on the introverted side, I can be quiet and mm -hmm. it's not optimal for a podcast. So there's a stack that I've wired and practiced and, and I've cultivated a certain alter ego in order to do podcasts as effectively as possible as an example. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So do you have a, you have a menu of your stacks? You're like, Oh, I'm hanging out with the wife. I need this stack or I'm, I'm going into a big business call. I need this stack and podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do. Um, and it, you know, you're trying to kind of tweak those all the time. Right. But fundamentally, you know, the, the few states that I use one is, your focus ferocity, which is, you know, yeah. I'm writing. So right now I'm writing a book that's going to be published next year. And I put on headphones and I'll, I'll have an assistant on the call, but they're muted. We're barely talking and we're just hyper-focused yeah. and we're editing and we're writing. Um, and I, you know, trained in copywriting started 25 years ago. So I, it's kind of a, a state that I cultivated with time, but you know, Right now, Boptimizers has like 54 full-timers plus another 15 part-timers. I have to spend a lot of time with people. Mm -hmm. That's not a great state to connect with people. So the neurochemistry of an asshole is high, high dopamine, which makes you want to achieve things, high acetylcholine, which makes you hyper-focused, and high adrenaline, which makes you, you know, somewhat aggressive and intense. Right. And if you don't have like serotonin, if you don't have GABA, 
you lose connectiveness. Mm. And that's not good if you're a leader. If you're working with people, you want to be connected. You want to be able to, to bond. And if you're too wired, if you're too sympathetic, you'll lose that. So too, too sympathetic, like yeah. If you're too too deep in fight, flight, and freeze, so again, okay. your nervous system is a spectrum. Okay. If you look at it kind of like a temperature gauge, you've got like minus five, which is your sleeping. That's the most parasympathetic you get. Okay. Zero, you're calm and alert, and plus five, you're in a life and death situation. Mm -hmm. Your nervous system is is constantly shifting based on what you're doing. Okay. So if you're meditating, it's a big downshift. If you're working out, it's a big upshift. If you're having an argument, it's a big upshift. If you're, you know, just in nature and calm and you're using magnesium breakthrough, which is one of our products, you're probably super chill and just really parasympathetic. So that's a big part of creating states. Like you can kind of start with that. And that was one of the things that my fighting teacher, Christoph Clarkson, talked about. It's like if you're in a fight, like, you know, he fought professionally over a hundred professional fights, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you're constantly shifting from like kind of a plus five, which is just, you know, absolute focus savagery to being a little more analytical. And, and it was one of the things he taught is you're shifting that constantly based on what you need to do. So yeah. And, and something you learn, it's kind of a gear shift. You mm -hmm. know, you're going to go do squats a brutal leg down on Monday. It's like, I need to be in a, in a high sympathetic state. I need to be, I need to have enough adrenaline, enough drive right. to, to really not just do the workout, but crush it. Right. I mean, if you got enough adrenaline and dopamine, you crush things. Now, right. Right. That's where it, there's where it's kind of bad with people because not everybody can handle that energy. So yeah. unless you, you really make sure that the people you're doing things with understand that uh -huh. um, it's key, but you can hack all of that with neurochemistry. So that's, that's the point. Every state is kind of a cocktail. It's not just one thing. Okay. And depending what state you're trying to create, you're moving those up or down on the dials. Okay. So whether you're moving up serotonin or GABA, cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline, I mean, testosterone is a big one too, especially for men, you know, optimizing that, you know, if your testosterone goes from like a 300 to a 700, mm -hmm. 700 is probably an optimal range, right? You, you go from probably being rather docile, apathetic, neutral to high levels of drivingness. Okay. So testosterone is really important too, especially for men. Like mm -hmm. if you want, if you need driving this, testosterone is it. If you need aggression, adrenaline is it. Now, again, these words drive aggression have bad connotations, but you know, maybe you just need to go to a, a three on aggression. It's not about going to a plus 10. You just need right. a little more adrenaline to get you to do things. Um, and again, just being conscious of that. And if it's too much, you dial things back. And if you need more, you, you ramp them up. That's what you can do with the newts. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Where is so when I started learning about neuro, neurochemicals and balancing neurochemicals, it was it was life changing for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I may may have had like a day where I'm feeling a bit down or blue, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just lacking serotonin, and I could do something that kind of boosts the serotonin levels, and you feel better. Like it's it's really that simple. Um, where and you mentioned. Um, you know, like, uh, here's, here's the, the menu of an asshole. They've got dopamine and some, I think adrenaline. you said adrenaline going, right? Yeah. And so where's the menu that we can find that says, Hey, do I want asshole level? Here's the neurochemicals that I need. Do I want uh nice guy level? Do I want aggression, hard workout level? Is there, is there anything that you found? Cause that would be amazing. And then we're, we're like, working on that. Okay. That's where, good. that's where we're going with utopia. It's like a menu of states. Now, he, here's the complication, uh -huh. which we're also working on solving. Everybody's genetically wired differently, differently. And differently in terms of neurochemistry. Right. So the key question is, where, where are you neurochemically dominant and where are you deficient? Right. Understanding that gives you a lot of awareness in terms of 
you know, why you are the way you are and both on the strength side and on the negative side. Yeah. So almost every entrepreneur top athlete is dopamine acetylcholine dominant. Acetylcholine okay. is focus. Dopamine is achievement. It's learning. It's doing things. It's the reward system that gets you to take the next action because you want to feel that again and again and again. It's also right. the molecule of addiction, which I'm very familiar with. I've been 12 years sober, but you know, Congrats. I was lost for 20 years in that in that dopamine loop. So. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a double sided molecule, but it's really the molecule you need to get stuff done. I mean, Charles Poliquin, who was one of the top strength coaches on the planet, you know, God bless him. Uh, he wouldn't even work with an athlete unless they had high dopamine, high acetylcholine. He knew they would never be world class. Like he trained mm. Olympic athletes, right? right? To be Olympic athlete level, you need world class levels of dopamine and acetylcholine. Okay. You need hyper focus and just that almost obsessiveness to right. achieve. That's the dopamine, right? Now, again, also looking at your deficiencies, you're probably like that too, just the fact you're doing a podcast. Again, I don't know you that well yet, but you know, just looking at how you operate your life, you're probably wired that way. Mm -hmm. Now, where you can really start to shift things is patching deficiencies. Right. So if you're serotonin deficient and you, you get that to optimal, and again, more isn't better. That's that's such a key point with almost everything related to biological or neurochemical optimization. It's not, you know, and again, as a former addict, I thought more was better with everything. No, it's not. Uh -huh. Optimal is better. Right. So there is a, an optimal range. And when you go past that, you typically, I mean, just look at caffeine, you just get jittery. Yeah. It doesn't work better, it actually works worse. Yeah. So patching deficiencies is huge. And then you can just shift things and really start playing like an orchestra with your mind. Yeah. And that's, that's the analogy that we, we think of the brain. It's, you know, it's not just one instrument, it's multiple instruments. And depending what music you want your mind to play, you shift those neurochemicals around. Do you have a, a, a pre like, you know, supplements are huge these days. Nootropics are huge. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a preference of, uh, I always try my best to get the nutrient source sources through food, not always possible, mm -hmm. but do you, do you, does it matter to you? Is it like, you know, you're like, uh, what type of diet do you keep in? And are you trying to get those nutrients or, and, and those stimulants through food first and then the supplements are second or how's that work for you? Yeah, food's the foundation, but you know, if we're talking about you know, foods, foods give you macros, right? Mm -hmm. So protein, carbs, and fats. Okay, mm -hmm. that's key. Which, by the way, Boptimizers, my company, the the first mission we had, and in my opinion, we've achieved it, was to build the ultimate line of products that optimize digestion and eutrophication, which is the breakdown, the transport, and the assimilation of those macros. Okay. You know, so what you eat is critical, but you break it down. You need enzymes, probiotic, hydrochloric acid. That's the three things you need. Mm -hmm. Some people, they have enough HCL, hydrochloric acid, which is enough, which is okay. That drops with time. And then optimizing your enzymes based on your diet makes a big difference. So we have like a K-Pax, which is for keto guys. Masszymes, which is for the masses. We have a, a veg one coming out. And um, yeah, we have gluten guardian. So if you're eating pasta, you know, and really we have a research lab. So we're always testing which enzymes are superior for different types of protein. And in my opinion, protein's the meta macro. Mm -hmm. That's the most important macro for weight loss, for muscle gain, and for health. Mm -hmm. And but it's not the protein that's the key; it's the amino acids. Okay. So there's a big distinction there. People talk about protein, but can you break the protein down? Can you get the aminos? That's where proteolytic enzymes come in. That was our first blockbuster product 15 years ago. It's still one of our top three bestsellers. And it rocks. I mean, that makes a big difference on relieving digestive distress, getting energized, and again, really giving your body aminos. So that's, that's a key one. Now, if you're talking about brain optimization, it does, it's almost impossible to really shift neurochemicals with food. Now, 
we also produce a, a probiotic strain or a blend of probiotic strains designed to create neurochemicals. Mm -hmm. That does happen, right? So 95% of the serotonin, 50% of your dopamine comes from your gut. So making sure that you've got a, a diet either rich in ferments or fermented foods, or you're taking the right probiotics. Again, those, the, they're called psychobiotics. They're producing neurochemicals. That is one way. Okay. So t theoretically from foods, and again, it's even with that is food. You don't know what strains you're getting from sauerkraut or from, you know, kombuchas as an example. It's not an optimized blend of probiotics. Okay. We have a lab and our p top researcher, PhD, that's what she does. She got a PhD in biofilms. So we're constantly running tests on probiotics. And the question with probiotics is what are the probiotics producing? The people talk about probiotics, the same thing with proteins, not about proteins, about aminos. And with the, with the probiotics is because what molecules are they producing? And we're starting to measure that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to optimize that. So that that's, that's where probiotics are at. But in terms of neurochemicals, you have to go to plants, extracts, and that, that's where you're going to find those things. It's, it's, I mean, there's certain things like eggs. Okay, eggs are going to give you acetylcholine for mm -hmm. focus. So there's certain things you're going to get, but you can only shift your brain state so much. I mean, caffeine, for example, it's from a plant. So if you're counting plants as foods, then yeah, you can, you can use that, but you need to get into supplementation usually. Yeah. That, that also seems like a thing that, that if we had a menu for, um, you know, some sort of resource that we could see and, and say, oh, you know, maybe it's coffee to help shift my mindset. Maybe it's the supplements that I need. Maybe it's an activity that I can do, you know, maybe it's just having dinner with friends, you know, to, to feel more connected sort of thing. Um, but, but hold on, you, you yes. said something critical. Okay. So if we break down a state, it has five components. It starts with mental or physical processes. So that's, so that's two, two parts of a state, right? Physical okay. processes or mental processes. Those two things will have impact on three elements. The neuroelectricity, which is your brain waves, which we can talk about, your neurochemistry, and the neurostructural, meaning different hubs in your brain get turned on or turned off. So if you look at the brain from that perspective, all the stuff you said, like I've got my cat right here, right? If I want to become more parasympathetic, more relaxed, activate oxytocin, which is another really key molecule. Um, I can play with my cat. I just got a new kitten the other day. I know I'm, I'm going and playing with him multiple times a day, bonding with him. And that bonding experience is produces a really powerful molecule called oxytocin. Same right. thing you get right. when you hug and have sex. And so that's another um, player in the orchestra. I mean, yeah. There's again a lot of things you can do. Meditation will shut down certain hubs in your brain. It will shift you into a parasympathetic state, lower cortisol. So again, that will that will create very different states than a high performance, more intense state. Right. But again, you're in control of that just based on your own mental processes. Right, and it, it's a it's a subtle art of finding the awareness, like. You know, you can feel the the tension build up in in your your back or your like I can in my back when I'm working and I'm like, oh, it's time to get away from the computer and go do something else, maybe a little walk or breathing or have a call with a friend or something like that to to kind of shift that state. Um, go ahead. Well, I think one of the best books, one of the books that changed my life the most, and I read this book not long after having a massive burnout in my mid twenties because I was working a hundred hours a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, is the powerful engagement and realizing one, the game is really energy management, but how do you do that? It's just like pro athletes as entrepreneurs to, I see entrepreneurs. Like I look at pro athletes and I've trained pro athletes, trained NHL guys, MMA guys. And it's all about active hyper-focus and then recovery. And right. you're cycling back and forth. So for entrepreneurs, the cycles have different duration, right? Whether you're focused for an hour and a half or two hours, but then you need to get out of that. You need to shift, whether it's just 10 minutes, like I've got a balcony here with the pool, I go rebound for 10 minutes or play with my cats. I just need like two, three or four of those 
in an eight, 10 hour hyper focused day. And it makes all the difference. You know, it's yeah. like I'm staying connected with life. Uh, again, that oxytocin makes me feel great. And I'm not feeling the the edge of the grind, you know, like people talk about grinding. I never want to feel like I'm grinding. If I'm grinding, you know, that I, I've grinded before. It's kind mm -hmm. of like you're worn, you're exhausted, but you just keep pushing. Yeah. That's not a high performance state. You mm. know, I want to be hyper focused. I'm enjoying the experience and then turn off and then right. go back to that and turn off. I like the way you put that. I definitely like the way you put that because so many people, you know, talk about the hustle and grind, right? And just push through it and go and go and go. But I've recognized this in my own self, like as I get older, for sure, because I've burnt myself out as well, um, is yeah. is that that one that's no fun. It leads to lack of a lot of those neurochemicals. It leads to lack of brain reaction voltage, um, and, and lack of empathy and, and sympathy and connection with other humans and depression as well. And, um, but if we can manage that, like you said, you know, and on a regular basis, that's the long term way to do it in a high performance mm -hmm. state. Yeah. And the harder you push, the more, the more the recovery needs to be effective. Yeah. So we've done like hyper intense record breaking, to be frank, levels of training volume at, at brain training facilities. And the, what allowed us, whereas like when we went at first, we were crashing by day four, we were finished. Mm -hmm. Like it was all willpower. It was just grit grind all for physical, time. physical activity or actually? well you could call it physical but you got your brain wired to a neural feedback system and you're okay. you're going at it for four or five hours a day it, going it, at it, at like working on neurofeedback okay, so let good. me explain okay. a bit of neurofeedback what's neurofeedback mm -hmm. and, and why would that be intense so neurofeedback you have electrodes wired to your brain it's mm -hmm. measuring which brain waves and how much of each your brain's producing in all these different areas of your mind Okay. And if I was to wire your brain right now, you'd, you'd see the, all these waves oscillating in all these different parts of your brain. I actually have a brain scanner, like a $14,000 brain scanner. So I've seen, seen those before. Yeah, okay. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Well, what neurofeedback does, it feeds you back a reward signal. And the okay. reward signal comes on when you, your brain does the right thing and it shuts off or gives you a, a bad signal when you go the wrong way. So okay. let's say you're trying to train alpha, yeah. which is a good starting wave. The, you set up the system to reward you as your brain increases the amplitude and the synchrony of your alpha brain waves. Okay. And your brain starts loving that. It's like, oh, okay, you like that? So, and it's a dopamine loop. You're creating a dopamine loop with the neurofeedback. So your brain wants to do more and more of whatever it is you're telling it to do. Yes. And, and real quick, Matt, can yeah. you, can you tell us what, uh, for the listeners, what alpha training alpha is exactly so they know? Yeah. So your brain waves, let's just break down brain waves real, real okay. quickly. So let's start with beta betas, you know, t technically in the teens to 40 Hertz, we're in a high beta state right now. It's the state that you get into when you want to get stuff done. Now, Again, it, it, we're just really, really broad, but too much beta in the wrong places will give you anxiety. So people yeah. that have anxiety, if you're wired their brains, you'll see some really beta. high beta in the wrong places. If you slow down your brain waves, first you kind of there's a there's a mid range between alpha and beta, and some people call it flow. Uh, when you train, it's called SMR, and it's a very flow like state. So you're you're focused, but you're calm and Calm but alert is a really high performance state. Mm -hmm. Now, even that's a range, right? There's kind of more calmness or more alertness, and you can you can play with that. But 12 hertz is alpha, so 12 to eight, that's the the alpha zone. Okay. And you're depending what level. And again, 12 to eight, there's a difference. The more you slow down, the more open-minded you are and it's very different than focus beta is focus alpha they call it open focus there's a great book on this topic called open focus okay and if you focus you actually crash your alpha brain waves so it's actually a the way to break alpha is to just focus okay 
where I, whereas alpha is almost like peripheral. You know how like, okay, I could focus with my right. vision and go peripheral. So alpha is a peripheral state and like your eyes closed. By the way, if you close your eyes, your alpha waves double instantly. Okay. Instantly. If they don't, there's something wrong with your brain. And so oh, that's, interesting. That's, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. And that's why when you want to meditate, eyes closed, that's the science behind that. Yeah. Now, seven to eight, it's called the Schumann. It's like the earth's frequency. Forget about that. It's kind of like a, a buzzed out state a little bit spaced out. But if you get to seven to four, that's theta. Now that's actually my dominant wave of, okay. you know, my dominant brainwave is theta. It's visionary, strategic. Um, I think Dispenza's description is awesome, which is your body's asleep, but your mind's awake. Everybody hits it twice a day, once when they wake up, once when they're passing out. Okay. It's hypnagogic or hypnopompic yeah. states. Yeah. And it's that state where you start to dream yeah. and you're kind of aware of it. And by the way, one of the ways you can improve theta, most people pass out, right? So they hit theta and they fall asleep. Right. The key is to build the ability to kind of energize your brain in that state without activating your body. Okay. One of the key the key moves to do is to lie down. You don't sit for theta. If you sit, you're going to energize your body a lot more. So it's much better for alpha. Okay. And that's what, one of the best ways to train theta is to go into a float tank. If you go to a float tank and it takes like 30, 45 minutes, but you're in it, you feel it. Your whole nervous system just goes. Yeah. Brain waves slow down and you're just floating and it's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's theta. And our friend, Jesse Elder, by the way, has the record on the next one, which is Delta. So I've heard about down, this. Yeah. Now there's two kind of deltas. There's sleeping Delta, which if you're getting good quality sleep every night, which I think is potentially the best thing anyone can do in general. If you get de great Delta sleep, it's very rejuvenating. That's where you produce most of your hormones, your growth hormone, your testosterone, it's, it's a key, key part of the recovery process. And of course you can track that with different devices, but optimizing for deep sleep is one of the ultimate biohacks. Mm -hmm. I spent about 45 G's on sleep optimization with gadgets and gears and $10,000 custom mattresses. And frankly, it's one of the best investments I've ever made. Like forget buying a car, buy a sleep optimized <laughs> set. That, that, that's the best investment other than maybe a Bitcoin, but anyways, <laughs> so that's that. Um, then there's gamma. So gamma, when they've looked at the brain waves of the most advanced Zen masters, like 25, 30, 40, 50 years, their dominant wave is gamma. It's a universal connectiveness. My friend, uh, Tony has all the records on gamma at uh, 40 years of Zen. And that's yeah, a phenomenal wave. Um, you know, it's also correlated with genius. So before a eureka moment, you, if you measure your brain waves, you get this massive spike mm -hmm. of gamma waves and it, it seems to facilitate lateral thinking. So okay. lateral thinking is when your right and left brain communicate and, and send information and really genius comes down to that most of the time. It, it's yeah. being able to process and most entrepreneurs are good lateral thinkers. They're able to go from creativity to creating a system to, you know, figuring out a vision, to seeing a vision, to figuring out the strategy. They just bounce back and forth. So that's another thing you can train. There's another type of neurofeedback where it's neurostructural training. Okay. So you do the brain scan, like probably they're similar to your device, but after that you set up the hubs so you can start training hub connection. Yeah. That's a game changer. So yeah. back to those five things, the neurostructural can be directly trained. Yeah. And I've seen when you're talking about functioning, that's the most powerful thing. Training the amplitude and the synchrony of the brain waves. It's more powerful in terms of emotional evolution and spiritual evolution, but in terms of getting stuff done, the neurostructural is where it's at. That's my thought. How do you know which one you should train, Matt? Like um, train both. You train everything. Train them listen, all. Listen, 
something I could just talk about for days and weeks. And I think it's, it's the ultimate, it's the meta of everything is stacking, whether it comes to business, whether it comes to your health, your brain, stacking, you're compounding the effects of multiple things, right? Okay. I mean, I think it was Buffett that said compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, I mean, and, and when, when we build products, everything is built on this principle of synergizing every part of a, of a bio pathway or a neural pathway. But I use the same framework in business. It's like, let's say you look at a funnel and you optimize seven different parts, 10%, you've doubled the performance. Mm -hmm. You're compounding these incremental elements. And I did the same thing with sleep, same approach. You know, I was, inc I went from like zero to 15 minutes of deep sleep to 30. Then I kept adding things. And now it's like 90 minutes of deep sleep. And it's just been transformative, you know, in terms of how I feel in the morning and just my overall health and performance and body fat and lean muscle mass and all of that. So yeah, stacking is paramount on every level. So, so what are some of the first, like, if somebody is just a listener and they're like, Hey, I want to train my alpha. I want to train theta, delta, um, gamma. What are just some of the, the easy things to do that they could do at home on their own to start training those different states of mind? Yeah, probably the best place to start in rec, you know, in just in general is with guided meditations. Okay. <clears throat> the other, the next level, if you will, is guided meditations with binaural beats. Okay. So binaural beats will entrain your brain. It will shift your brain. Now, the, the, the best analogy I have, and I think it's a very accurate one, is the difference between entrainment and neurofeedback is entrainment, you're on a, on a bicycle with training wheels, mm -hmm. and I push you down the hill. Okay. You're moving, you're going where you want to go, but you're not really learning to ride a bicycle. Your brain's not learning. Okay. With neurofeedback, I'm training you or you're training yourself on how to ride an 18-speed bicycle up and down the mountains of France. Okay. That's the difference. And you're okay. able to shift and optimize and move this wave up and this wave down. And you really learn how to control your mind. Okay. So that's the ultimate. Now, again, people can make a lot of gains. But the other thing with neurofeedback and – I don't know the exact number, but in my mind, it's like literally a hundred times more gains than normal meditation. Okay. Like you will get to where you want to go with meditations a hundred times faster, you know, minute for minute. And it's just, again, approximation, but it's a massive, massive difference, multiple. Why? Because the way we all learn is through feedback systems. Right. Feedback loops is the key to massive evolutionary cycles and just personal growth. Now your brain's no different. It's very hard to sense, especially without ever being told what's going on. And that's what neurofeedback tells you, right? It tells you your brain what's happening inside of it. And your brain is learning. So it's learning every second. It's like, oh, that's what, that's what you want me to do. That's alpha. Okay, let me, let me move that. Or that's theta, or that's gamma, that's synchrony. And your brain is learning and evolving and it's permanent changes. That's the cool thing with neurofeedback. This isn't like weightlifting where you got to go every three, four days, otherwise mm -hmm. you start losing gains. This is permanent shifts. Now, again, your brain has neuroplasticity, so right. it's always shifting to a certain degree, but within, I'd say five, six days of really pushing it four or five hours a day, you can make quantum quantum changes. Wow. Like changes that you know, my friend Tony, who's got the record for gamma, he's at the Zen master level. He's okay. been doing neurofeedback for four years. So he's at the level of the guys with 25, 30 years. Right. Of okay. Hardcore. Was he training? Uh, I guess he wasn't training. He was just naturally gifted with high gamma. He wasn't training specifically to increase no, his gamma. gamma. You can train okay. gamma. Okay. So back to your question. Okay. Ultimate systems for home training. Yeah. And by the way, massive, massive evolutionary cycle is we're like in the kindergarten stage of this product curve. Yeah. 
first, and, I, and I've got a bunch of these systems. Let me start a saying, and I don't want to name brand names, but almost everything that's being sold to consumers right now is trash. Okay. It's trash on the quality of the sensors mm -hmm. and even worse, the location of the sensors. Right. I've okay. talked to neuroscientists and, you know, whoever built that product that designed it, they didn't understand really the, like if you train the wrong things in the wrong parts or in the wrong parts of the brain, you're going to get negative effects. Yeah. That's a possibility with some of those devices. That makes sense. Okay. So, all right. I've got a, there's a system called B-Medic Signet. I've got that system here. It's about seven to $12,000. You need a medical practitioner to, to get one for you. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible system. That's a medical grade system. For neural feedback specifically? For neural feedback. Gotcha. The systems where you can do the neurostructural stuff are on 25 Gs. Mm -hmm. That includes usually a 32 to 64 channel dry headset along with software. I think the software is called NeuroGuide. That's, that's the pinnacle of that system. Okay. So that's about 25, maybe even 30 Gs now, but the, the sensor you need is a very expensive headset. The headset's the majority of that, of that cost. Now on the inexpensive side and full disclosure, I am an investor in this company and I'm a super fan. Okay. okay. Companies coming out with what I've been dreaming about since I started your feedback six years ago. And it's a headset. It almost looks like a Bose headset, okay. a cooler version of that. It's coming out later this year. Companies called Sense A, S E N S dot A I. You can go to the site, you can pre order. Okay. I've tried the headset. You can train everything from gamma to synchrony. There's no system being sold to consumers. Most medical grade systems, you can't even train gamma on. This okay. system, they, they did a huge evolution on a dry EEG, which solves a huge friction problem because I don't like putting goop in my hair and having to take a shower. I want to be able to go like this, yeah. grab my phone, push yeah. the button and go. Yeah. That's what you can do with Sensei. So I can't wait. The I don't know what their final price is going to be. Probably going to be like 1200-ish. So don't quote me on that, but it's going to be around that price. So that's a game changer. You'll be able to train anywhere in a plane, in a car, in an Uber ride, and just all you need is your phone. So it's, it's built mobile first. And you don't need a computer to power this this archaic software to run electrodes, which is what my other system is. Yeah. When would that be available? Idea. I think they're targeting uh, November, December to launch. That, that's I know, fantastic. I know it's being produced right now. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I know some, you know, some some neurofeedback uh, devices you can rent, and they, they cost about that per month, twelve hundred, mm -hmm. eleven hundred thousand bucks per month or so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually know two people have who have done. Uh, and I'm curious your, about your feedback on this, who have done 50 to 60 ses sessions with different neurofeedback devices and didn't see mm. any changes whatsoever. Mm. Um, thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So remember we talked about the model of the mind, which is you know, mental processes or physical processes activate neurochemistry, neuroelectricity, or neurostructural changes. Yeah. So I think where a lot of people are failing with their neurofeedback training is they don't have a good mental process. Okay. So the mental process that you're running in conjunction with the wave you want to train needs to be harmonized. Like right. if I'm doing the wrong mental process, like just use alpha as example, I'm focusing, I'm yeah. visualizing, I'm crashing my alpha. And that's where having a great practitioner. It's like, just like most things. I mean, most people go to the gym and they don't really ever get great results because they never spent the money or took the time to educate themselves on how to really train or do good exercise or good form when you're doing martial arts or whatever it is. Yeah. And neural feedback's no different. The mental process is what activates the waves. And then the neural feedback system teaches you and makes you aware that the waves are moving and it helps you amplify it. Yeah. But if you're not moving the waves in the first place with the right mental process, you're not going to get the gains. And, mm -hmm. and I, the neuropractitioners that I've trained with, 
has been multiple. They've all pretty much said that it's all mental process is the foundation. And then the technology just amplifies that if you will. Right. So the, these devices, they were kind of like mailed to your home for the month and mm-hmm. then not a lot of instruction, just music. Listen, it's to. almost it, useless. It's almost wow. Okay. Okay. Cool. It, without the, the instruction, without the guidance, right. You're going to get like a fraction of a fraction of the gains. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense because I, I've heard so much about neurofeedback. Um, but like you mentioned, I think the, the best results that I've heard about uh, is with people that are on some at some location or at some event and they're doing it and they're working it with a practitioner. We're the ones that, you know, well, you're sending, you know. Okay, that's what we've optimized. We, we own, mm-hmm. and I'm going to sound totally unhumble here for a second, but <laughs> you can ask the neuroscientists. We own virtually every record at 40 years of Zen. When okay. I say we, we it's, it's three guys. Okay. And we've trained and we've perfected everything about it from the pregame to the, to during, to the, and a lot of it is the supplements and the stacks. And a lot of it is the recovery, but you get what, you know, so here's kind of an axiom of the nervous system. And, you know, I started playing guitar when I was 12 and I became really good quick. I was playing, you know, enter Sandman in front of thousands of people when I was like 14, 15. Mm-hmm. And it was all, it all came down in my, my nervous system courses at university and my teacher Clarkson all said the same thing. You got to push your nervous system to the 90% excitation level. Okay. What does that mean? It means that, okay, a hundred percent and a hundred percent looks different in different activities, right? But you're pushing your nervous system's ability to about 90. Okay. At a hundred, you start losing control. Like, right. so let's say typing as an example, if I put you a web page and I say type as fast as possible. If you push yourself to a hundred, you can start making mistakes. Right. Right. And like, you know, you start making a lot of typos. If, if you slow down to 90, it's intense. It's a bit stressful, which is critical because the noradrenaline helps your brain learn. Mm-hmm. We know that now too. So it really, you need to have like almost like a stress experience to a certain level while you're learning anything to really, and, and Andrew Huberman, who's one of my favorite guys out there talking about neurochemistry, Mine too, yeah. confirmed that, you know, confirmed that the neurodrawing is critical, which by the way, we can optimize with newts. So the way to do that with neurofeedback is you got to train for multiple days for multiple hours a day. Like it, it's like, you want to feel like you've been squatting with your mind multiple times a day <laughs> for multiple days. It's uh-huh. really what it feels like. Like I said, like the first time we did it, we were crashed. I mean, me, my partner, Wade, another guy, everybody was finished on day four. Yeah. Like just, it was all fumes and we had three more days to go. Uh-huh. And then, you know, went to another brain training facility and they give much better supplementation and food. And I was a game changer. We could train five days. We were pretty worn by day five, but we never crashed. Okay. And that was a light bulb. I'm like, okay, yeah, it Mm -hmm. makes sense. Give my body more, more of everything. And we can get into how you can create crazy transformations on any level really quick, which is the, the principle of maximization. If you maximize stress and you maximize adaptation, you get extreme gains in record time, whether it's bodybuilding. I know some guys that have built levels of lean muscle mass using that principle in seven days that most people wouldn't believe possible, like 20, 30 pounds on a DEXA scan. Wow. Now, a lot of anabolics, a lot of hormones, a lot of different things. Okay. Okay. But the principle remains the principle. You could use that same principle for brain training. Okay. And if you're, you're pushing your brain, you're pushing your nervous system and you get, you get warm, but you, you keep pushing. That's how you break through. That's right. how you get exponential gains. So that's the other thing too. Most people do half an hour or 15 minutes. Listen, I've got a system here. I can tell you that doing these brief occasional, even a couple times a week trainings. Yeah. You make gains, 
but there's something about again getting to that 90 percent zone right it, the, the learning curve goes exponential right so i mean we're at the level where we float every night we have to so we're floating i mean the level of supplements we take float meaning float tanks float tanks yeah we need to we need to float because we're using ice baths to try to cool the nervous system like it's at that level like our body temperature gets cranked because we're probably burning three four thousand calories with our brains a day wow like my calorie expenditure during that week goes off the charts the, yeah this eat. isn't your regular day but when you're doing that training no no when you're doing the brain training yeah and that's a part of it right you don't want to like you got to fuel your whole body on every and it's multifaceted you know we've broken yeah. down the brain the nervous system into all these different elements back to stacking yeah, you can optimize one and get some gains, but if you optimize all the pathways, it's exponential. It's the same thing with muscle growth, the way you achieve that crazy level of muscle growth. And you can do it too as a natural guy. It's not going to be as extreme, but we've we've got some, some VIP clients we work with and we're able to build crazy amounts of muscle mass while they're burning fat and they're natural. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is you hit a lot of anabolic pathways you know people focus on two maybe three we start focusing on six seven eight nine ten you, you achieve incredible results it's the same thing with the brain right where, where can people go to have that type of brain training you mentioned 40 years is in anything else yeah uh, companies so you recommend yeah so there's biocybernaut as well they're really the predecessors okay got a sedona um a lot of people ask me but i got a great blog post on your feedback and my experience doing this on madgallant.tv or just Google Matt Gallant uh, neurofeedback and you'll, you'll find that article. Okay. And I cover a lot of the facilities and uh, really how to optimize. We just kind of covered a bit of it here. Really how to optimize the experience to really get the max gains. But BioCybernaut and 40 Years of Zen are probably the top two places right now um, that I would recommend that I've experienced. At BioCybernaut, I would say that they're a bit better at the emotional processing side. So if somebody's got a lot of trauma, I tend to recommend them to go there. Okay. Somebody's more into high performance, and you can do just a lot more at Zen. Like at BioCybernaut, you're going to be doing alpha, just alpha, but you're going to be able to, to really transform emotionally. Okay. At Zen, you're going to do a lot more variety of things and become a lot more functional. Okay. So those are the, depending on what your top goal is. I, again, stack them. I mean, do them all. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I've done. I've done five Zens and one BioCybernaut. Um, I'm going to do more soon. And I try to do once a year. I think in a perfect, and I've done, I've had years where I've done twice. That's the ultimate. I think okay. spending two weeks a year pushing your brain to this level and doing all the protocols that we do is the ultimate because the gains keep going for six to nine months. Okay. Like I'm, I'm talking about progressing, right? Like the adaptation that happens takes a long time, right? Cause it's, it's completely different neural pathways, neurostructural, and then, there's an EQ change and a level of consciousness change. And that's actually where you're, you're watching your thoughts and you're listening to what you're saying. And there's a lot of things that you don't want to say anymore. There's mm -hmm. a lot of thoughts that you realize, okay, I'm not that person anymore. So you have to keep kind of processing and realizing and rewiring even your languaging that takes a while. Right. But your reactivity will drop about 80% every time you do it. So, okay. and I've seen that pretty much across the board. That's been a universal thing with, I think everyone that I've know that's gone, it's quite a few where, let's see reactivity is a 10, it'll be a two. If you go back, it'll drop to, you know, 0 0.4. And then every So you're time referring gone, to like negative reactions? Is that what you mean? Like just eliminating impulsive? reactivity completely. Like okay. somebody says something, somebody insults you. Do you react? I'm talking internally. Yeah. Do you even feel offended? Do you get a charge? Do you get upset? 
you know, yeah. being upset is what I mean by reactivity. And right. you know, that can take many shifts and forms. Regarding negative reactions, not necessarily positive reactions. Or are you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the elimination of negative reactions. Got it, yeah. So that would be the primal, like the the lighting up of the amygdala, right? Because that quite often is mm -hmm. the reaction, right? The reaction Correct. of a negative the, reaction. The key, the key you, you nailed it. And the key in your, your amygdala is your guard dog, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you make your guard dog just chill out? <laughs> That's the question. Uh -huh. and, and the answer is you have to retrain your guard dog to see certain things no longer as a traumatic, like a, as a trauma first and thus a, tr a threat. Yeah. So once you remove and by the best book on this topic, and it's one of the, it's a masterpiece. It's one of the highest rated books you'll ever find on Amazon called the body keeps the score. Cannot okay. recommend that book highly enough. And the title says it all. Your body keeps the score. So when you get traumatized, your body does not forget that. Right. You can suppress it with your mind, but it's stored in your nervous system and your amygdala, your guard dog is constantly, constantly scanning to see similar threats to try mm -hmm. to save you from more pain. Right. So you have to shift. And here's the axiom of healing. And I worked with Dawson Church. I can't recommend Dawson Church work enough. Mind to Matter is a masterpiece. Genie in your genes. And Dawson just a brilliant guy, one of the top EFT researchers in the world. I'm trained in EFT. And it's one of my favorite practices for healing traumas because it shifts your nervous system into parasympathetic like that, literally mm -hmm. tapping within a few minutes. And the more you do it, it becomes faster and faster. I think your nervous system just upgrades and you're able to process pain and take it from a, a discomfort, a uncomfortable, painful place to feeling good about it. You're usually in the beginning, it's like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, but with time you can process painful experiences in three to five minutes. Yeah. You know, and so I've done about 500 rounds of that, and usually with the neurofeedback. And neurofeedback is a similar process, right? So the axiom is resense, re experience the pain that, that was that happened during the trauma. And usually, do that you just play the movie again, mm -hmm. then the sensation comes into your body, you tune into the sensation, and then you shift your nervous system, or you make sure that your nervous system goes to a parasympathetic place. Parasympathetic is healing, okay. especially when it comes to emotional experiences. So by re-experiencing that and making my nervous system be in a parasympathetic state, I can eliminate the pain of that sensation in mm. my body, in my nervous system, and get to a place where I feel good. Now, mental processes, forgiveness, gratitude, giving love, surrendering, you know, putting yourself at the other person's feet are all sub processes that accelerate that experience. Okay. Now you can tap and tapping is really easy to learn. Go to YouTube, put EFT tapping. You can learn it in minutes. And you know, I, and by the way, it's a great place called the tapping place.com. You can hire EFT people to literally guide you through EFT in real time. It's awesome. Created by my friend Dawson. And yeah, I recommend, I send people there all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. All their, your FT practitioners are world-class and it works. And, and it's a highly researched thing. When I saw EFT at first, I'm like, that looks a little weird. Like, okay, mom, what's this doing? Well, what this is doing when you're tapping in certain parts of the body. And I have a device called the AccuPen that will tell you where all the acupuncture points are. Cause there's a different level of electricity in and those meridians, point. right? Yeah. That if you press on those and, you know, you can just press calmly and you do just softly, your nervous system shifts. It's almost like this, this cheat code that you can <laughs> shift your nervous system, which is amazing. Now, again, yeah. you close your eyes. That helps. So alpha will also help. And that was the other thing they taught at BioCybernaut. At BioCybernaut, Dr. Hart runs the place, said, listen, you cannot effectively forgive unless you're in to a meditative state. Right. Meaning alpha, meaning parasympathetic, meaning healing. Right. So if you don't shift, and that's why you can't forgive from beta. I can't intellectualize a resentment. Right. Like you can tell yourself a story and you'll feel a bit better. 
but it's still in your nervous system. Your body still kept the score. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I, I'm what came up for me when you were talking about that. Um, I've done a handful of like, uh, personal growth seminars or conferences where you do experience a major shift, you know, like maybe a Tony's Robin seminar or something like that. Um, emotionally, physically, mentally, I'm wondering if you've ever, uh, went, done those on your own and if you could compare the shifts, the sort of emotional shifts or mental shifts that you had at, you know, a seminar like that versus what you're doing at 40 years of Zen or, or bio, uh, cyber or uh, an experience like that. That's a great question. It's funny because i another guy was considering going to neurofeedback and pretty much asked the same question. Mm -hmm. You know, look, just looking at my evolution, it really, again, it started like I became obsessed with copywriting, started going to copywriting seminars by all the greats, Gary Hobbard, John Carlton, Dan Kennedy. And yeah, you, you, I would level up. Then I started going to marketing conferences like Gary Benson, Vengas and John Reese. And, you know, you're learning information and you're, meeting people and you're leveling up skill wise. Yeah. And that's going to more personal transformational stuff. And yeah, there was some profound things that a lot of them that created permanent shifts. So I, I'm all for it, but I think a lot of that is more coming from an intellectual place. It's more intellectual okay. processing, teaching you frameworks, teaching you mental models, teaching you how to remove biases. Now those are all upgrades to the mind. Mm -hmm. always in those can be worked on but when it comes to processing trauma it happens on really on the level of the body and the emotional body okay and that's when we talk about the limbic system or experiencing the pain in your body so when you play the movie you stop the movie the movie okay. doesn't matter anymore and you focus on the sensation in your body for me it's almost always behind my sternum and i feel this tension it's almost like a, like a squeezing and, and choking sometimes. Sometimes it's up in my throat. Mm -hmm. So I focus on that. You know, most people suppress that. Mm -hmm. It's a classic uh, saying, you know, what you resist persists, especially right. when it comes to pain. It's very true. It's very accurate. Yeah. So the opposite is true too. If you just embrace it and experience it, like don't judge it, don't fight it, don't push it. Don't try to stop it. You just stay with it and you calm your nervous system. That's the key. That's yeah. everything. That's you got to bring your brain waves down, shift your nervous system and continue experiencing that sensation. And I got this where the mental process come in. So focusing on what is the gift of that experience? What's the gift of that trauma, a traumatic moment in time. Mm -hmm. And when you experience the gift, your heart, gets turned on, you, you feel that it counters, it changes it from a uncomfortable, painful experience to a positive, pleasant experience. The more you can sense that your neurochemistry is changing when you experience gratitude. I'm not saying like, again, it's all about experiencing gratitude, not just putting it on the list or saying it right. or saying thank you. It's can you sense it, experience it in your body, in your heart? Yeah. That, you know, if you're able to do that, you will clear a tremendous amount of trauma out of your nervous system. That's, that's an incredible state. Gratitude is a state, right? Right. It's an incredible state to clear out pain and clear out trauma. What, what's your daily routine like, Matt? Like on a, a regular day for you look like? Mm -hmm. um, times of sleep, times of wake, meditation, exercise, work, you know. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll talk about my typical work day and then I'd say I have like two fundamental days, which is you know, work days and then rejuvenating days. They're very different. Okay. I can cover both, but I think they're critical back to the powerful engagements. You know, your weekends are critical and we talk about like what I what reg regenerates me the most. Then maybe it'll be some some helpful things. During the week, uh, first of all, I tried waking up early for a long time, then read The Power of When, and you know, I'm a night person. So 12.30, 1 o'clock, typical go to bedtime, and we'll cycle back to that moment. So I typically wake up at 8.30. Um, 
what I'm working on right now. And, and it, man, it's, this is relatively fresh, but I wake up and I, I live in a penthouse in front of a park. So I go to the park and I just walk for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and I've experienced before, you know, you closing, using lights called retimers. And those are great for traveling, by the way, they're $400 Australian device that blasts your eyes with blue light, which is one of the hacks to really straighten or reprogram your circadian rhythm, right? Your eyes see the sun, it recognizes it's the start of the day and it really kind of kickstarts or, or resets your circadian clock. Yeah. Two, you know, there's a metabolic boost and it's something I've realized too in the last couple of years and I'm incorporating more and more all the time is micro movements throughout the day. So I've been a, an exerciser since I'm 12 but micro movements, just rebounding for 10 minutes, walking the park 10 minutes, um, what are stretching, doing a little bit of yoga, doing 10 push ups, like doesn't need to be a lot. And the research says, you know, if you don't move for two hours, it's pretty easy to do if you're working at your desk, right? Yeah. It's easy for me to do. Um, your, your body starts downgrading in okay. all, all kinds of ways. So two hours is really kind of a critical clock. But it, it actually starts at the 30 minute mark. So in a perfect world, every 30 minutes, you would, st you know, standing up at your desk. I mean, you're talking about sitting as the new smoking. Well, <laughs> not moving is the new smoking. Yeah, I agree. So that's more accurate, whether it's sitting or if you're lying down all day or even standing all day, you want to be changing up your positions and doing little bouts of exercise. And I think it can produce massive increase in outputting calories because yeah. the boost is not just how much you did there, but kind of activates, pushes your metabolism a bit for a few hours. So those are some other perks and benefits, but I usually start, I wake up at eight 30, I get nuded. So I wake up and drink water. And then um, I go for the, before I go for the walk, I say, okay, what zone do I want to be in? I literally pull up the calendar in my phone and I look at, like I'm having a three podcast this week. So I knew right away, I was planning my stacks, which we can talk a little bit about if you want, mm -hmm. planning my stacks for the podcast days, cause it's a different state than what I typically would be in, which is right. a little more introverted. So take the newts and then go walk. Then I start my work day at nine. So most of my day is around, probably half of it is meeting with team leaders um and it's a variety of people and i try to optimize how frequently i meet people because you know meeting too much is it's a waste so like every meeting needs to be impactful yeah um, i'm always trying to like stop a meeting or shorten it and then only out of necessity do i add or increase meetings okay and i try to make you know only a cycle usually a quarter sometimes two and I'm trying as a CEO to be moving my time into higher leverage things always. And that changes, you know, so every quarter I'm thinking, okay, what, what do I need to stop doing or start doing or change how I'm doing? And it depends, you know, so I'm always, you know, right now it's really like 25 million this year and we're doubling year on year. So within two years, we should be able to run a hundred million in revenue. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, who do I need to become? I know I need to, to change and start skill and state gapping way before I'm there. And I think if you don't do that, and I've experienced this before, you know, super rapid growth and I wasn't ready, you know, I wasn't prepared for the problems. Mm -hmm. So that was early on in my career, suffered the consequences and said, well, I need to always be a step ahead in terms of skills, my states, my mental endurance, my functioning capability. So yeah, it's like, okay, what, what's a nine figure CEO doing, you know, and I have some ideas and you talk to, this is where I think masterminding can be valuable. I'm a huge fan of just in time learning on every level, including <laughs> masterminds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Including mentors, including advisors, consultants, like, who do I need to, where do I need to level up on based on where I need to level up to 
and then who's the best people in that thing that that's okay. the, the process there so yeah and then work and i try to spend about half my time in deep work so that's usually like right now we're, we're getting a, a significant book publishing deal you got some offers on the table already so we're working on that book and that's that's deep work so there's there's kind of deep work that i'm probably the most qualified person to do mm -hmm. in the company and it's super high impact stuff and then the rest of the time is just working with team leaders and helping optimize them and help them level up and grow and solve their problems so that they can become incredible team leaders. So that that's where the majority of my work time is, you know, and I, and I still run the optimization. Like my best skills as a marketer is probably copywriting, marketing, and split testing. And then the, as far as media goes, paid media, specifically pay-per-click. That's what I did for a long, long time. So I still... Like I'm still playing the CMO role. I don't write copy anymore, but it's about building systems and leaders. You know, I, I think that's the majority of my time. So we've hired like a full-time systems builder and we're trying to systematize everything so that everything is just more scalable. I, I think at the, I knew that too prior to hitting like 10 million in revenue, that systems was the key. So. I think we've been slightly ahead. We're trying to keep up with the systems we need in order to be able to hire more people. Like hiring is starting to become a challenge. Like we're hiring 13 people this quarter. We have two people full time. We build a good hiring system. So even hiring becomes a system. So you're constantly trying to build systems that build scale so that you don't fall apart as you're growing and, and falling apart, growing too fast. I've experienced it. I mean, it, yeah. it's not uncommon. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I do. Um, since COVID, you know, so usually then I work out, I got some training partners I, I train with, I train like three times a week weights and then four times a week cardio, um, come back, eat. And then we talk about food, but you know, right now I'm doing like three then keto six days. I refeed for one day, do three meals a day. I stop intermittent fasting, which you can, talk about if you want, but then at night I, I got into, I was a video gamer as a kid. I did not, I barely video game for like 20 years. Uh -huh. COVID happened. My friend gives me a PS4 and tells me to play call of duty. Yeah. <laughs> I actually never played a shooter game, a first person shooter, and I'm hooked. I'm hooked on the team vibe, the team experience played by, by myself. It's okay. But the competitiveness and the camaraderie, the fellowship uh, in the game totally got me hooked. So sometimes maybe an hour, an hour and a half of that. And then spend time with wifey. Um, been married for, for a decade. She's an amazing woman and just hang out, hang out with the cats, watch some shows and movies, big entertainment fan. And then go to bed. So again, that's 1230. So that's a typical work day. Okay. Um, weekends, I think what, you know, I, I don't work. I, I just do five days a week. I've done six days and like once in a while, if I absolutely have to, I'll do a half day. But I try to be so effective during the week that I don't need to do that. Yeah. That That's because I think for me, and again, there was a time where I worked 100 hours a week for a long time in my 20s, led to that burnout. Yeah, I mean, it, you lose connection with life. You know, I think people, animals, great friendships, bonding with friends, family, wifeys, kids. I think that's, that's where the juice of life is. Like for me, business is just a spiritual path and it's awesome. And I love it. And I love creating amazing things and working with amazing people. But you know, on the weekends, it's a lot of time with friends and, and wifey and trying to, um, yeah, just do more parasympathetic things, walk, chill out, go in the sun, um, you know, go, go to restaurants with friends, you know, go, go enjoy meals, bond, do spiritual activities. So I usually have a couple of spiritual experiences during the weekends with friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that feeds me. So like, it's not just food, but I think feeding on friends and, you know, there's that great Harvard study that revealed the number one happiness factor is deep, long friendships. Yeah. Absolutely.
so that bonding with with some great brothers, great men for me um, is it, critical. So I have a lot of, of good quality time each week with some good men. What type of weekend spiritual activities are you doing? Yeah, sometimes group meditations. Um, you know, just just being part of a fellowship of of men that you know get vulnerable, share things, support each other. I think that it's a really powerful healing environment. Yeah. You can find that in, you know, it's a thing you want to probably find locally, you yeah. know, but you can build it you know, zoom. We can do anything. Right. Uh, that do bonding you, with great men, it, it, it's so powerful. Yeah. Do you have that local in Panama? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And, and frankly, if I moved and, you know, I've lived in different parts of the world, if I had to move, um, be the thing I'd miss the most, you know? Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap up soon here, Matt, but I have to ask before you, before we go, um, your podcast stack. Podcast stack. Okay. I'll yeah. tell you what I'm on today. Okay. Cause you know, it's, it's a lot of things. I'd say the fundamental stack and I'm slightly introverted. Yeah. So let me d explain a bit of the design of the stack and kind of the purpose and this is how it starts. Right. So you're, let's say you want to shift a character trait from one side of the spectrum to another, you gotta be aware of what that is. So for me, it's introversion. I go deep with usually a small group of people, um, small group of friends and you know, it's about a dozen people that you just go deep with. And now when I have to be at events, talk to new people, by the way, the best analogy on introverts, extroverts is that introverts wake up in the morning, they got five coins in their pocket and every person they talk to, it's a coin. Especially okay. new people, sometimes it's two coins, <laughs> three coins, right? And when you talk to good friends, it's it's no coins. Now, extroverts wake up with five coins in their pocket, and they got to go spend it. It's like money burning in their pockets. They need right. conversations. So that's a big one, and I think that learning to shift that for both extroverts or introverts is a power move. And I think most high performers, you know, when when you look at Beyonce and a lot of different athletes, they're able to just shift into like a high performance state and they're introverted, but they're able to just go in front of the world and perform. Right. You're right. And, and that's a very specific state and shift. So that's kind of what I'm striving for. That's so let's, let's start with that. Yeah. It's enough adrenaline. So I do, and then this is one of the stacks. The, a huge game changer is the fat stack. The fat stack for driving any fat soluble molecule, it's a game changer. It's one of the biggest things you can do. And it's so simple. You know, I looked at the research last year on CBD. You can get 800% more CBD in your bloodstream taking it with a high fat meal. And then this was like, oh yeah, everything that's fat soluble, you're going to get that multiplier. So I, I did the experiment with vitamin D. I took it from 50 to 150. If you know anything about that range, that's like literally off the scale. I've never been able to get it high, even getting in the sun. What changed it was the vitamin D caps, which are fat soluble yeah. with a high fat stack. And ideally you do a high fat stack in the morning with your nootropics because the fat stack will also multiply the absorption and slow down the curve. So it's two things. It's amazing. You're getting more effect and a more stable effect by taking molecules with fats. And that's something that Dave Asprey, even Dave Asprey who created or popularized Bulletproof Coffee. Yeah. Um, never really harped on, but you can use Bulletproof Coffee or whatever version of it that you want to do as long as it's high fat. And you take all your high fat supplements in one shot, your CBD, your krill, your vitamin D, your K, your nudes. That super stack synergizes. It's, it's exponential. Now, the other thing you add, and for me, it's probably the main thing that pushes me into extroversion, and that's CBD and CBG. Okay. So adding that now by itself, yeah, I can push it there. Now, CBD increases anandamide. Anandamide is a really powerful player in the orchestra. Okay. It's the bliss molecule. 
So if you've ever been blissed out in your heart, that's anandamide. Okay. CBD will increase that by reducing the enzyme that breaks down anandamide. So you're building more of that up. And for me, it takes me right into a high extroverted verbal. I want to talk. I'm enjoying talking. I could talk for hours versus I can easily get into a quiet, contemplative, meditative state if I'm not on a similar stack. So there's enough stem on the stem side. I use um, Nectar X, which is a great all around focus booster. And I used a, a new one that we haven't released yet called New Boost. And you take that in, like early afternoon and it just gives you like another four or five hour curve mm -hmm. of performance. It's a great, it's a great product. So that's what I'm on. Nectar X, Zamner Coffee, which is the fat coffee, which is just MCT, butter, the CBD, my vitamins, which is D3, K2, sorry, K. And um, yeah, that's it. And I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm hyper-focused. I've got another webinar tonight. I'll be able to be high-performance for that. Uh -huh. Like my, the curve, and so I time my coffee too. And that's a key thing too with timing. Um, you want to time your nudes based on what you're doing. So if you want to be verbal and extroverted for an event that's at 7 p.m., you got to time your, your stack so that it's hitting you during that time. Right. Now, neurogenesis happens through this process of using newts and activating the state. So I am building the neurology of talking and being extroverted, connecting with strangers, even though it's being amplified through the neurochemistry. Mm -hmm. It's rewiring my brain. It's going to be easier and easier to activate that state. And that's how you hardwire things. Right? It's it, it, it's it's working because I had a whole list of questions and we didn't even get to them because we were so going so deep on all this. This has been absolutely fantastic, Matt. I uh, really appreciate all your time and sharing all your wisdom with us. Um, we didn't even talk about business because we were diving <laughs> so deep in high performance stuff. But I love it, man. This is uh, this is going to be a memorable episode that I'm going to have to go revisit and take some notes on for sure. Um, any final words uh, for the listeners before we wrap up um, and where we could find you at if you want to share some contact info? Yeah, so I'll give three websites. Uh, first one's my personal, mattgallant.tv. I'm not that active. There's two books and a bunch of high value blog posts on there. Nothing to sell. Mm -hmm. Just in my stories there for anybody who's interested. Just stuff I created to to capture, you know, content, and it's, it's easier to share with my team as well. Um, I'll probably start blogging. It's just one of those things that it would take me three hours to write a blog post and. It's a lot of time to work on really high value things. So I might return to that. Um, probably launch a YouTube channel as well very soon. We got some videos in the can. On the professional side, bioptimizers.com is the product line that we optimize digestion and we optimize nervous systems. We just came out with or relaunched Protein Breakthrough, which is an amazing plant based protein supplement. We've got the mm -hmm. Keto One coming out soon. So our goal is to be the number one authorities in the world and providers of great nutrition. So we want to serve keto, plant-based, paleo. Nice. Not just with supplements, but with food. So we're, again, I'm totally with you on the importance of great food. Yeah. And on the topic side is Newtopia, N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A.com. Okay. And that's where you can learn more about the nootropics. Uh, we got a couple of awesome webinars that covers in greater depth, a couple of the things we touched on. And um, yeah, it's just game changing, personalized nootropics. It's a dream come true for me. I was working on a bunch of stacks. Then I met Mr. Newts and he had built a much better version of anything I had in terms of prototypes. Mm -hmm. It was a dream come true. And we just combined and synergized on how to stack things and combine things and it's just been a, a dream come true for me as a, as a user daily. Cause I used to use news occasionally, probably four or five times a month before. And it was okay, but there was certain things I didn't like about a lot of it. You know, modafinil, I'd feel it down the next day. 
didn't vibe with that. Yeah. Um, some of the more popular ones kind of get me revved up, but it was missing kind of the EQ. It was missing some molecules. Like I could get focused and wired and, but to be able to balance out emotionally and neurochemically the, the wiredness with connectiveness and feeling good and, and oxytocin being connected with God and, and people and animals. Uh, it's awesome. And that, yeah. that's, that's really what I'm into. And I, I try it. to be in that state, have that running in the background while, even if I'm in high performance mode, like it's always that connectiveness. And that's where I think the micro breaks really, help kind of reping that it's like, okay, yeah. let me just play with a kitten for 10 minutes, <laughs> get into a loving space and then carry that and reping it. So I but yeah, it, did you com, buy optimizers.com B I O P T I M I Z E R S.com and Mac And yeah, Perfect. man, this was definitely one of the best interviews I've ever done. Um, nobody's asked me the series of questions you've asked and oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Well, it's been an honor having you on the show. I've thoroughly enjoyed picking your brain and um, I'm definitely going to have to go through this again and take some notes and and um, I might be getting a sense, sensei, sensei when they come up. So I'm when they come out, awesome. I'm excited for that. That's really cool. Matt, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to wrap up there. Listeners, thank you guys for tuning in once again and we'll see you all on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.